Hello fans and welcome to This Day in Baseball where we're going to bring you a full radio broadcast of today's game and before we do that I just want to thank Classic Baseball Radio and there's a link in the notes where you can uh, check out their full channel. They have many, many great radio broadcasts. And while you're listening to today's game, if you want to check out much more about the game and the players, look on the links below, and you're going to see uh, links to player pages, the date the game happened, the year it happened, and the play-by-play. Enjoy the game, and check out the links while you're watching the game, and please don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that every time new content comes out, you're going to get that uh, firsthand. And thank you again for checking out this day in baseball, and enjoy the game. Bob Neal in Yankee Stadium, New York, where we're set to bring you the sixth game of the World Series between the Milwaukee Braves and the New York Yankees. The breeze today is blowing out towards right field. It will be an advantage to the left-hand batters. And that short right field wall is the hopes, of course, of the New York Yankees who hope to win and the hopes of the Milwaukee Braves who hope to take it all here this afternoon. Here are the lineups now for the visiting Milwaukee Braves. Leading off and playing second base is Felix Mantilla. Felix is looking for his first hit in the series. He came on in relief of Red Shandings when Red came up with a pull leg muscle. Mantilla with good speed will give the Milwaukee Braves perhaps a little more speed on the right side of the infield. Johnny Logan will be at shortstop, and Johnny has been one of the heroes, of course, for Milwaukee. He's had four hits and 18 at-bats. Eddie Matthews, and you needn't recount the deeds that Mr. Matthews has had, going into Milwaukee, and after uh, some time, Eddie looked like he might turn out to be one of those fellows who goes through a series and never gets a base hit. His bat has not spoken too often, but it has talked eloquently. He has three hits, and he has, of course, come through with the big hits, especially his home run that wrapped it up. Hank Aaron will bat fourth, and he'll play in center field, and Aaron has been the top man for the Braves in batting average, 421. With eight hits and 19 times at bat, and as Casey Stengel said, we had hoped to stop Aaron. The results show we haven't. Number five in the batting order for Milwaukee will be Wes Covington, who has made two of the great catches in the World Series. He'll be out in left field. Frank Torrey, the young left-hand batter, will be at first base. Mr. Torrey uh, has had one hit and five times at bat a home run. Bob Hazel will be in right field. Hazel uh, is looking for his first hit. He's been up there six times. He's a left-hand batter, and during the month that he was in that lineup for the Braves, consistently during the regular season, he was the big man, batted close to 500. Del Rice, who always catches Bob Buell, will bat eight in the Milwaukee lineup. Interesting sidelight on Rice. Rice was the catcher for Harry the Cat Brookeen when the St. Louis Cardinals played in the series back in, I believe it was 1946. Here's the Yankee batting order. Hank Bauer will lead off and play right field. Tony Kubek, in the absence of Mickey Mantle, whose shoulder appears to be worse, will bat second and play center field. Ina Slaughter, the veteran of many campaigns, will bat third for the Yankees and be in left field. Yogi Berra, who complains about batting fourth but not having anybody on base when he comes up, will be up there to see what he can do. Barra has not had an RBI in the series. He will bat fourth. He'll do the catching. Gil McDougal will bat fifth and play shortstop for the Yankees. Jerry Lumpy, rookie, will be at third base. Harry Simpson, left-hand batter, will be at first base batting seventh. Jerry Coleman will bat eighth and play second base. Turley is going to the mound for the Yankees. Turley all set to go. And the first batter for the Braves, Felix Mantilla, ready to step in. Umpire Jock O'Connor of the National League set to go. And ready to take you over the first four and a half innings of this, the sixth game of the World Series, my friend from Milwaukee, Earl Gillespie. Thank you very much, Bob Neal, and good afternoon, everybody. Boy, we have a perfect day as Bob Turley gets the sign from Yogi Berra. Felix Mantilla leads off, a right-handed batter who so far in the series is hitless in three times at bat. The outfield is shading the Felix around towards left. Here is the first pitch of the afternoon. High inside, this game is underway. Ball one and no strikes. In the Milwaukee first inning, Felix Mantilla, Johnny Logan, and Eddie Matthews will be the first three men to face Bob Turley. 
big, fast-balling right-hander who stands 6 feet 2, packs 217 pounds. He's 27 years old. Here is the delivery. The pitch swung on this. And it's even up at ball one and strike one. Bob Turley, without that wind-up, working on Felix Manti, who's playing in place of the injured Red Shandinst. As both of these great ball clubs this afternoon are minus a couple of big stars. There's a swing and a high foul that'll be out of play on the first base side, and it's one and two. As a matter of fact, Casey Stengel has had the worst of it so far with two uh, great batting stars out of the Classic right now, Mickey Mantle and Bill Scowron, who was injured in the very first ball game, re-injuring an old back hurt, and he has been out ever since. Felix Mantia, right-handed batter, standing deep, a slightly closed stance. Bob Turley delivers, and there's a swing and a fly ball to center field. Tony Kubek is coming into the run now. He's throwing up, makes the catch, and that's one out. Looked like Kubek was fooled on that fly ball for a second. He started back a couple of steps, then angled in and came charging hard, slowing up the last four or five steps to make the catch. That's one out. It brings up shortstop Johnny Logan. The Yankee outfield has slaughter in left, Kubek in center field, and Bauer in right field. The Jerry Lumpy at third base. Joe McDougal at short, Jerry Coleman at second base, and Harry Simpson at first base. Turley on the mound, Mara behind the plate. The pitch is a fast strike on the outside corner belt high. Blazing fastball, fired in there by Bob Turley. Logan so far has been up 18 times in the series with four base hits. Batting at 222, he has one double, one home run, and two RBIs. Here's a fastball high, and it's even up at ball one and strike one. Today's pitchers are the same two who faced each other last Saturday afternoon at County Stadium in Milwaukee. Neither was around very long. Bob Turley nor Bob Buell. Here's the 1-1 pitch. A swing and a foul tip, and it's 1-2. and two. Buell was charged with a loss in that 12-3 game on Saturday, while Don Larson picked up the victory in place of Bob Turley. Ball one and strike two the count on brave shortstop Johnny Logan. Manager Fred Haney has Connie Ryan coaching at third base with Johnny Riddle down at first base. One man is out. Nobody on top of the first inning and no score. Turley fires away and it's outside. Ball two. The win today will help a strong left-handed batter. It's blowing out towards the right field seats. Spacious Yankee Stadium. Short down the lines, but boy, it really moves out. 461 and straightaway center field. 457 the left center and 407 the right center. Ball two, strike two count on Logan. Turley's pitch is ball three. It's low outside and it's a full count of three and two. Umpire Jocko Conlon is calling the balls and strikes. Conlon of the National League. Bill McKinley of the American League at first base. Augie Donatelli of the National League at second base. And Joe Paparella of the American League is at third base. With Sikori of the National League down the left field line and Nestor Shylock down the right field line. Here's a swing and a miss. And Logan strikes out. Johnny Logan going around on a fastball. And that's strikeout number one for Bob Turley. Who during the 1957 American League campaign registered 152 strikeouts and 176 innings. Two away. And the batter third baseman Eddie Matthews. who's booming bat brought the uh, Braves back from the brink of defeat last Sunday with a dramatic two-run home run in the last half of the 10th inning giving the Braves a 7-5 victory left-handed batter takes slick one on the inside corner belt high Matthews has three hits in 15 at-bats he is hitting 200 one double one home run two runs batted in however he has walked seven times so far in the first five games of the series a one pitch is quick to fall inside corner knee high Matthews glares back at umpire Jack O'Conlon the outfield playing deep and towards right field the shortstop Gil McDougal over towards the bag at second base opening up quite a hole between he and the third baseman there's a fastball it's outside one and two Jerry Lumpy is about ten feet off the line at third base the second baseman Jerry Coleman is playing deep and so is first baseman Harry Simpson one and two the count on Matthews. Henry Aaron is on deck. Two outs. The pitch is swung on and fouled. He tried to hold up. It's back into the crowd, and it's one and two. A sharp breaking curveball, one of the few thrown so far by Turley in this first inning, was aimed at that outside corner. Matthews checking up on the swing. 
Got a piece of that ball and fouled it off. So Eddie is still up there with a count of ball one and strike two. Bob Turley takes a deep breath. Here is the pitch, and it's just inside a ball. It's two and two. Opposing hitters must be ready with fellas like Bob Turley and Don Larson on the mound because they do not go into that orthodox windup employed by 99% of the pitchers. Ball two, strike two. The pitch to Eddie Matthews, and it's swung on and fouled up into the upper deck, directly behind the plate, and the count remains at two and two. Connie Ryan talks it up in that third base coaching box. and a strike two count. The Yankee outfield playing to the right and playing deep for Matthews. Turley's 2-2 pitch and it's too low and that's ball three. So Matthews has worked it to a full count. Ball three and strike two. Clear blue skies after a couple of days of rain here in the New York area. The weatherman certainly has been kind to both Milwaukee and New York, with excellent weather prevailing throughout the first five games of the series. 3-2 pitch, swung on and fouled, out of play, and it's still 3-2. Eddie Matthews moving his feet around the batter's box. He has a habit of moving up on the front of the batter's box after he swings and fouls off a pitch, and seems to be patting down that dirt with his white shoes. Loosens up those big shoulders. Watching Bob Turley, and speaking of shoulders, boy, he really has a pair. Fast balling right hander, 3 2 pitch, a swing and a ground ball that is fouled on the first baseline, and it's picked up by the first base coach, Johnny Riddle. All three, strike two. Some of the fans out here at Yankee Stadium are still moving into the ballpark, and we're going to have a crowd between 65 and 70,000 again this afternoon for the first five games of the series. We have seen 272,097 on hand. All three strike two on Matthews. Two outs, nobody on base. Top half of the first inning. Turley is ready. Delivers a swing and a roller down the first base line over a fast as Turley. Close the first base. He is out and that retires the side. Three up, three down. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. And at the end of the top half of the first inning, there's no score. Milwaukee nothing, and the Yankees nothing. We'll be back. Number nine. In the last half of the first inning for the New York Yankees. Hank Bauer, Tony Kubek, and Enos Country Slaughter will face the right-handed Bob Buell. Bob, who in 1957, a Dodger tormentor in the Master League, Won 18 ball games and lost seven. Had an earned run average of 2.74. He's 62, 180 pound right hander. And the first pitch to Hank Bauer is too low. That's the ball. Bauer is on the threshold today of a World Series record. He has hit safely in 12 consecutive games. Takes a strike and it's even up at ball one and strike one. He has tied the record. And a baser today will break it. Bauer has six hits and 23 times at bat. He swings, misses on a flanking pitch, and it's one and two. Bauer hitting a 273 in the series, has one double, one triple, one home run, and he has driven in five Yankee runs. Strong right-handed batter. The outfield playing him around towards left. Bob Buell delivers the curve. is swung on this. He struck him out. As Bauer reached out for a bad pitch. A good pitch as far as Buell was concerned. Ball breaking wide of the plate. Strikeout number one for Bob Buell. And it brings up the center fielder, Tony Kovac. One of the hitting stars of the 57 Classic. The young rookie from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, batting at 350, has seven hits in 20 times of batting. Strike. And he is in the hole now. Strike one count. Kovac has two home runs, four RBIs, and he swings and fouls them back into the screen. It's strike two. Hospital list of these two teams has grown quite a bit in the last few days. Johnny Cooks is hospitalized with a case of the flu here in New York. Here's the 0-2 pitch. A swing on this. He struck him out. Tony Kubek goes down on strikes. Two strikeouts in a row for Bob Ewell. And it brings up 
brings up the left fielder, Nina's Country Slaughter. Slaughter's been up only six times, but he has himself a three base hits, which of course figures out to a 500 batting average, one double, no RBIs. Two outs, nobody on base, left-handed batter takes that side of the ball. Ball one and no strikes. Wind blowing out towards right field. Bob Buell, a fast worker, comes down with a pitch and a swing a foul behind the plate. It's even up at one and one. Manager Fred Haney today has Covington in left, Aaron in center field, and Bob Hazel in right field. Buell's in the delivery, but Slaughter had called the time, but the pitch is called a ball outside. He had stepped out of the batter's box as Buell was into his delivery, so the pitch counts. No, it doesn't. I Jack O'Connor looked down and held up his two fingers on his left hand, indicating that pitch was a ball, and now he is again signaling ball two and strike one. So the pitch did count and missed the corner. It's two and one on Slaughter, who takes the ball. It's three and one now on Enos. The catcher, Yogi Berra, is on deck. Ball three and a strike one count. from Saginaw, Michigan. The right-hander delivers and a swing and a miss by Enos Slaughter and it's three and two. All three and a strike two count. 41-year-old outfielder who keeps himself in excellent condition. Country Slaughter playing left field today for Casey Stengel. All three strike two. Buell ready. Here is the pitch and it's ball four. He walks Slaughter. That puts a Yankee on first base with Two outs, and it brings up catcher Yogi Berra. A lot of the heavy hitting responsibility has shifted over to the shoulders of this powerful left-handed batter with the absence of Mickey Mantle. Always a dangerous hitter. He has performed brilliantly in the past World Series. And incidentally, he's playing in his 53rd game today. Here is a ball outside to Yogi. His 53rd World Series ball game. Yogi Berra. Two outs, a teammate at first base. The outfield is playing Berra. Around towards left field. The infield straight away. The pitch on the way, and it's outside. Ball two. Rice yelled out to Buell, and Bob Natty was okay. Ball two, no strikes. Stretch, arms down, belt high, delivers, and a foul is off to the left of the plate. It's ball two and strike one. Yogi did not take a full cut, holding up on a fastball that looked like it was on that outside corner, and it's ball two and strike one now on Barrow with the shortstop. Gil McDougal on deck. Slaughter on first base and two outs. No score. First inning, a swing and a high, bouncing foul down the first baseline, and the count moves up to ball two and strike two. Barrow out in front of the pitch. Two, strike two. Buell fires. Here's a swing, a line drive, and a right field base hit. Water rounding second base is going to hold up as Bob Hazel relays the ball into the shortstop, Johnny Logan. Yogi Berra singles to right field. Hard shot. And there is the first base hit of the afternoon. Berra was batting at 278 with five for 18. Now here is shortstop, Gil McDougal had four base hits in 17 at-bats. He's hitting a 235. Has not had an extra base hit in the series. Two runs batted in. He is a tough man of the clutch. Gil McDougal, and he's up there with a runner in scoring position on second base. They're on first base, and the fastball is high. It's ball one. Ball one and no strikes. Slaughter on second base. They're on first base. Two outs, and a pitch gets away from the catcher. Yankee runners going to second and third base. Water rounds the bag at third, and he holds up. A wild pitch is charged to Bob Buell. A low outside breaking pitch has gone away from Del Rice. And New York has Ina Slaughter on third base, Yogi Bear on second base, and the count is ball two and no strikes on Gil McDougal with a rookie third baseman, Jerry Luffy, in the on deck circle. with their backs to the wall here in game number six. Hope they get started early in the ball game. Ernie 
Johnson loosening up for manager Fred Haney in the brave bullpen in deep left center field. Ball two, no strikes. And a swing on this, and it's strike one on McDougal as he cut around hard. Ball two and a strike one count. Yankee shortstop. Who has performed brilliantly so far in the series, especially with that glove out there at the shortstop position. Right-handed batter, Bob Buell, the right-hander. The 2-1 pitch, and this one as well as ball three. Ball three, strike one. Now Bob has slowed his pace. Taking his time, he's behind on the hitter. The 3-1 pitch, McDougal swings and foul tips the ball, and it's three and two. Ball rolls back to the screen. Full count, three and two. Bob Buell in a tough spot here in the last half of the first inning. Score, but the Yankees have runners on second and third base. Two men are out. And a full count on Gil McDougal. Ball three and strike two. Gil levels the bat across the plate, watching Bob Buell as Bob gets his side from Rice. The wind-up, 3-2 pitch. A swing and a miss. He's it out to retire the side. In the last half of the first inning, three strikeouts for Buell. No runs, one hit. No errors, and two men left on base. The score is Milwaukee nothing, the Yankees nothing. In the second for Milwaukee, Henry Aaron, West Covington, and Frank Torrey will be the first three men to face the right hander Bob Turley. Aaron is batting at 421. He's had a great series. Eight hits and 19 times at bat. One triple, two home runs, and five runs batted in. Henry has hit safely in all five of the World Series games. He's a right handed batter. Tremendous wrist power. And the first pitch is right down the alley for a call strike one. Aaron, who hails from Mobile, Alabama, now makes his winner home right in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. This will be his first winner in Milwaukee. Outfield playing around to the right. The pitch on the way, and it's outside a ball, so it's even up at one and one. Aaron Covington and Torrey. Due to hit here in the second, no score. Kubek, the center fielder, is shading Aaron a little bit towards right center field. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Swung on, miss. Strike two, and it's 1-2 and two on Henry. Henry Aaron, the Major League's leading home run hitter and RBI man in 1957. Ball one and strike two. Bob Turley. Delivers and the pitch is high inside. A curveball evens it up at ball two, strike two. Ball two and a strike two count on Aaron. Number four hitter in the Braves' batting order. Turley has his sign from Yogi Berra. The 2 2 pitch, and it's just outside a ball. Ball three and strike two. Yankee infield is just about straight away, although Coleman has now moved a couple of steps to his right over towards the bag at second base, and he is playing on the edge of the outfield grass. Ball three, strike two. Turley kicks up his leg and delivers a swing and a miss. He struck it out. So there is strikeout number two for the Yankee right-hander. Aaron going after a 3-2 pitch. Brings up the left fielder, Wes Covington, who has been the really great defensive star in this series. Here at Yankee Stadium, he made a great running catch of a long drive off the bat of Bobby Shantz with two men on base to retire the side. And Monday against the Yankees, he leaped high against the wall in Milwaukee and pulled down almost a sure shot home run by Gil McDougald. Covington swings and misses strike one. He's a left-handed batter who has had four hits in 17 times at bat. Hitting at 235. He has had one double and one run batted in. Very deep in the batter's box. Bending over at the waist. Pitch swung on. A high fly ball in the left center field. Tony Kubek is getting under this one. He is there and he makes the catch for the second out. Wes Covington flies out to Tony Kubek in left center field. Brings up the first baseman, Frank Torrey. Frank Torrey. in his second year of the Braves must be experiencing quite a thrill starting a ball game at Yankee Stadium because he is a boy who was born in Brooklyn, New York and still lives over in Brooklyn. Joe 
Hancock started the first two games of the series here at Yankee Stadium last week at first base. Here is a curb strike to Toy, a left-handed batter. He has had one hit in five times at bat. That was a home run at County Stadium in Milwaukee. Batting at 200. One run batted in, and the pitch is inside. Gets away from Yogi Berra. It's a ball. Even up. All one and strike one on Frank Torrey with two outs, nobody on base in the second. And there is no score. All one, strike one count. On deck is the right fielder, Bob Hazel. Turley, looking down, comes down with the next pitch. The curve is outside. It's ball two. Two one. Hank Bauer, deep in right field. And playing over to his right over towards right center while well, the outfield has shifted around towards the left. Playing Torrey to hit late. 2-1 pitch. It's high, and that's ball three. Ball three and strike one. Turley in last Saturday's game, the third game of the series, worked one and two-thirds innings, giving up one run on three hits. He walked four, and he struck out two. Don Larson took over, and the second went on to win the ball game. Here's a swing and a line drive to right field for a base hit. Frank Torrey singles to right for hit number one off Bob Turley, and it brings up the right fielder, Bob Hazel. So the base hits are even up at one apiece. Hazel, a phenom in that hitting department, after joining the Braves from that AAA farm club at Wichita, Kansas, has failed to come up with a base hit in the series. He's 0 for 6. He has been alternating in right field with the veteran outfielder, Andy Popko. But with a right hander out there, Bob Turley, Hazel gets the nod from manager Fred Haney. Two outs, a runner on first base, and he takes two lower ball. Ball one and no strikes. Yogi Berra will not have too much to be concerned about in this situation with Torrey on first base. Frank is not a fast runner. He is one of the slowest runners on the ball club. And very, very seldom breaks for second base. Here's a swing and a high foul behind the plate. Yogi Berra has a shot at this one. He is getting under the ball. Makes the catch. And Ladley fires the side as Hazel fouls out. No runs and one hit. No errors. One man was left on base. The score at the end of one and a half innings. Milwaukee nothing. And the Yankees nothing. The Yankee half of the second. Jerry Lumpy, Harry Simpson, and Jerry Coleman will be the first three men to face Bob Buell. Last half of the first inning, the Buell firing away, struck out Bauer and Kubek. Then he walked Slaughter. There a single to right field. Moving Slaughter to second base on a wild pitch. Runners went to second and third. Then he struck out Gil McDougal to retire the side. Now he goes to work on Jerry Lumpy and the pitch to Jerry, a left-handed batter, swung on and fouled on the third base side, landing up in the upper deck. Strike one. Outfield is playing Lumpy around towards left. Jerry is batting at 300 with three hits and ten times at bat and two runs batted in. Straightaway stance. Cocks that bat off the left shoulder. Now he steps out of the batter's box as Buell, who was almost into his delivery, steps suddenly back off the rubber. Strike one count. Nobody on base. Nobody out. The pitch on the way, and here's a ball that's low. It's even up at one and one. Ball one and strike one. Each team has hit five home runs so far in the series. The 1-1 one, one pitch is ball two outside, two and one. Yankee third baseman, Jerry Lumpy. Defensively in the series, the Braves infield has picked off eight double plays. The Yankees infield has three double plays. Here's a ground ball in the right field, base hit. Jerry Lumpy pulls a ground ball between Phoenix Mantilla and Frank Torrey. Hit number two off Bob Buell. First baseman, Harry Simpson, now the left-handed batter, who has had one hit in nine at-bats. He's hitting 111. Simpson has driven in one run in the series. Tall, lanky left-handed batter. The old stretches and delivers. The pitch is rolling outside of all. We're going to get action again in the bullpen, I believe, for Milwaukee. Side. The right-hander fires. The pitch is too low, and it's ball two. Two and nothing. Two 
nothing to count on Harry Simpson. Jerry Lumpy on first base and nobody out. Last half of the second, no score at Yankee Stadium. Game number six in the World Series. Fuels 2-0 and oh pitch. A spike is called. It's on the outside corner knee high. It's 2-1. and one. Braves lead in the series. Three victories to the Yankees, two. Ball two and a strike one count. Mule's next pitch is outside. Ball three. Ball three and strike one on Simpson. Looks down to the third base coach, Frank Crosetti, to see if that hit sign is on. Crosetti going through a series of signs in the third base coaching box. Ernie Johnson is warming up for the Braves. 3-1 pitch by a swing and a high foul. The runner was going at first base. Lumpy puts on the brakes three quarters of the way into the second base bag and then moves around back towards first. As Simpson took a good cut but fouled the ball. It's ball three and strike two. Casey Stengel has Charlie Keller coaching at first base. Ball three and strike two. Watch Lumpy now. He leads off first. There he goes. The pitch is fight free. The pike is second base. Going to be close. He is out at second base. <laughs> Harry Simpson is called out on strikes. Jerry Lumpy is thrown out at second base. Del Rice to Johnny Logan as the Braves click off their ninth double play of the series. This one is scored at two to six. Rice to Logan. That strike out is number four for Buell. Two men are out. The batter, second baseman Jerry Coleman, batting at 313 with five hits and 16 times at bat. Jerry has one double and two runs batted in. Looks at a fastball. It's low and it's a ball. Ball one and no strikes. Two outs, nobody on base. Buell's next pitch is outside, ball two. Fred Haney is blessed with two very fine catchers in Del Crandall and Del Rice. Very accurate, strong throws in the second base. And they have nipped a few Yankees trying to go into that bag. The 2-0 pitch, and a strike is called as Coleman fell away from the plate. He thought it was inside. Ball two, strike one. Jerry Coleman, right-handed batter. Bob Buell into the quick wind-up. Curve is high, and it's ball three. Ball three and strike one. Buell, when he's at his best, is keeping that curveball like any winning pitcher down around the knees. Here's that 3-1 pitch. Ball four. Coleman walks. And that is the second base on balls given up by Buell. Brings up the pitcher, Bob Turley. Up at bat on Saturday one time. He's 0 for 1 in the series. Buell on Saturday afternoon, his first World Series starting assignment, went two thirds of an inning, giving up three runs on two hits. He walked two and had no strikeouts. He now has struck out four Yankees and one and two thirds innings. And a fastball is low to the right handed batting Bob Turley. Ball one, no strikes. The Yankees have Jerry Coleman on first base and two outs, no score in the second. Field playing a little bit around towards left for Bob Turley, who looks at ball two outside, two and nothing. Del Rice is out talking to Buell, a very brief conversation. Many baseball fans have often wondered what that brief conversation consists of out there in the mound between the catcher and the pitcher. Here is a spike, and it's two and one. That's what it was about, I think. Rice says, come on now, Bob. Just cut away and try to get that ball over. He did. Hey, right-handed batter, Bob Turley. A swing and a ground ball back to Buell. Stabs it. Throws over to first base. Bentley tires the side on the second. No runs and one hit. No errors, and one man was left on base. At the end of the second inning, the score is Milwaukee nothing, the Yankees nothing. Top half of the third inning for Milwaukee. Del Rice, Bob Buell, and Felix Mantilla will face the right-hander Bob Turley. Rice, who caught in Saturday's game at Milwaukee, had one hit and three times at bat, so he's hitting at 333. A right-handed batter who has a very definite hitch in his swing. And like most hitters, he is a guess hitter, and when he's guessing right with that hitch, he can hit a ball a country mile. 
outfield playing around to the left. Rice is involved in his second World Series. His first was with the St. Louis Cardinals back in 1946. The first pitch swung on a high foul back towards the screen comes Yogi Berry's on the run. Can he reach it? Nope, it's on the screen and it's strike one. Strike one count. time the Braves saw the Yankees before this World Series was down in Bradenton, Florida, the Braves spring training base. They played an exhibition game against New York, and Vera had trouble with a high pop foul, like the one that just came back here on the screen, and the boys were kind of giving him the raspberries a little bit down in spring training. There's a swing and a high foul that's off to the right, and it's strike two. It wasn't Vera's fault at all that day because a very strong wind was blowing all around Bradenton that afternoon and carrying those high fly balls and those high pop fouls way out of the reach of the players. But Barrow likes to needle opposing players and the boys like to take a, a chance to uh, crack back at Yogi. 0-2 pitch. Strike three, a beautiful curveball. Bob Turley broke one up on the outside corner knee high and Rice is called out on strikes. So these blazing fastballers, Turley and Buell, are registering the strikeouts today. That's the first strikeout for Turley. Four strikeouts. Now here is Bob Buell, a right-handed batter. He tried switch hitting this year, going to the left side of the plate on a right-hander, but he has changed his mind about it. A strike is called. Like the average pitcher, he is not too good a hitter. There's a swing and a miss, and it's strike two. I should say the average hitting pitcher. Strike two count on Bob Buell. Field playing around to the left as Bob Turley delivers, and it's too low a ball. One man is out, nobody on base. There's no score in the third. On deck gets leadoff man, second baseman Felix Mantilla. Ball one and strike two. Turley fires, and strike three, he is called out. So the strikeouts are even up at four apiece. As Buell is called out on strikes, and it brings up the second baseman, Felix Mantilla, who flied out to Tony Kubek in shallow center field in the first inning. Felix Mantilla. Here is the first pitch to Felix, and a swing of fly ball driven back in the right field, going around to his right as Hank Fowler calling for it. He makes the catch. The Blazers are three up and three down. Nothing across the board, and the score at the end of two and a half innings, Milwaukee nothing, the Yankees nothing. The Yankees will lead off at the top of the batting order in the bottom of the third. Hank Bauer, Tony Kobach, and Ina Slaughter. Bauer went down swinging on a wide-breaking curveball in the first inning. Right-handed batter. Before stepping in, glances down at third base coach Frank Crosetti. Here is Buell's first pitch. A swing a miss. As Hank cut around hard, it's strike one. Strike one count. Bob Buell ready again, and the pitch is outside a ball, so it's even up at one and one. Ball one, strike one. On Hank Bauer, Tony Kubek in the on deck circle. As Bauer leads off, the pitch is just outside a ball. It's 2-1 on the Yankee right fielder. Ball two and a strike one count, and Buell thought he had that outside corner. Shakes his head as he reaches down for the rosin sack. Here's the 2-1 pitch. Bauer swings. It's a high fly ball to short left center field. Logan is back peddling for this ball. He is calling for it. Makes the catch. And it's one away. Johnny always gives the fans, if they follow his career closely, a tip-off when he has a high pop-up such as that under the outfield under control. He gives one good solid whack to his glove. Just before he makes the catch. That's one out. It brings up the center fielder, Tony Kubek, left-handed batter, and Tony takes the ball outside. Kubek struck out in the first inning. Ball one and no strikes. Bob Buell ready again, fires, and a swing of grumble hit to the second baseman's right. Up is Felix Mantilla, throws the first base, he is out. And that's two away, and that is the first ground ball hit to anybody else but uh, the pitcher, Bob Buell. Felix Mantilla coming up with his first assist. 
fielder, Eno Slaughter, who walked in the first inning. Another southpaw swinger takes the ball outside. Ball one and no strikes. Buell delivers, and it's ball two outside. Yogi Berra in the on-deck circle still has those shin guards on. What with two outs and nobody on base. Ball two, no strikes. No score in the last half of the third inning. The pitch on the way, and a ball is low. It's three and nothing. Bob Buell has issued two walks. One was to slaughter in the first inning. He walked Jerry Coleman in the second. Three and zero pitch. He gets that fastball in there for a call strike, and it's three and one. Now Slaughter looking down at Frank Crosetti. Shelly hit her take. We'll see in a moment. Three one pitch, and ball four. That's the third walk given up by Buell. So the situation is the same as it was in the first inning after he had gotten Bauer and Kubek out. He has walked Slaughter. Now here is Vera who singled the right field in the first inning, putting runners on first and second base. Yogi up there for the second time. With Slaughter on first base and two outs. Buell has his sign from Del Rice. Here's a swing and a long drive back in the right field. Let it throwing. It is a home run.
Conley, six foot eight inch right hander, is warming up for Fred Haney. Just in case Johnson runs into trouble here in the last half of the third, runners on first and second base and two outs and two Yankee runs have scored as New York has taken a two nothing lead in the last half of the third inning. Into the stretch, Ernie Johnson, the pitch to Simpson, a swing of this, he struck him out to retire the side. That is strikeout number one for Ernie. In the last half of the third, the Yankees scored two runs on two hits. There were no errors. Two men were left on base. And at the end of the third inning, the score is the Yankees two, Milwaukee nothing. First half of the fourth inning at Yankee Stadium, Johnny Logan, Eddie Matthews, and Henry Aaron will see what they can do now by getting these Braves back into the ball game. Somebody dumped a whole block of torn up papers out on the third base side, and Connie Ryan, the third base coach, looks like he's in a little bit of a snowstorm. Some fan on the third base upper deck has just dumped torn up papers on the third base side. They are floating down into the grandstand. They're being picked up now by some members of the ground crew here at Yankee Stadium. Also, by umpire Frank Sicori, and now the third base umpire, Joe Paparella of the American League, is helping out. And Connie Ryan is picking up a few pieces of paper in his coaching box at third base. The wind, which is blowing out to right field, help carry those leaflets or torn pieces of paper into the field. All set to go. Here is Logan in the batter's box. Johnny struck out in the first inning. Braves trail 2-0, fourth. Curley with a two-run lead comes down with the first pitch and it's picked one on the outside corner knee high. Strike one count. victories during the American League season. Delivers outside a ball that's even up at one and one. Ball one and strike one. Logan, Matthews, and Aaron to face Bob Turley in the fourth. The Braves have just one hit, a single to right field by Frank Torrey in the second. Here's a swing and a high foul with the catcher Yogi Berra coming back towards the stands. He's got room for this one. He makes the catch. Logan fouls out. up third baseman Eddie Matthews. Eddie was thrown out by Turley in the first inning. One out of nobody on base. Yankee outfield moving around to the right. New York two, Milwaukee nothing. Fourth inning of play. Turley's first pitch is a foul tip as Eddie tried to hold up on a low fastball creased off his bat and it's a strike. Strike one. Curly taking his time as the sign from Yogi Berra delivers the curve high. A ball that's even up at one and one. Ball one and strike one. The Yankees have two runs on four hits. The Braves no runs in one hit. Neither team has committed an error. One pitch, a swing and a ground ball. It is fouled down that first baseline, one and two. The home run by Yogi Berra with a man on base in the third was New York's sixth home run of the series. And the Yankees take the lead in that department, six to five. Ball one and strike two. Curley having a little trouble with the mound. Comes down sharply with his heel, kicking against the side of the rubber. Strike two on Eddie Matthews, a left-handed batter. The pitch is too low, ball two. Ball two and strike two. Bob Turley, the fastball right-hander who has discarded the windup. Did it last year. And here's the 2-2 two -two pitch. A swing and a drive to right center field. Going back to this ball is Bauer on the run. It is up there for extra bases. Matthews on his way in a second base. And he is going in with a stand-up double. Ball bounced off the shoulder of Matthews on the throw in from the outfield. And there 
is hit number two off Bob Shirley as Eddie Matthews hits a long drive. Between Hank Bauer and Tony Kubek, bouncing to the wall, that's his second double of the series, his fourth base hit. And here is center fielder Henry Aaron, who was called out on strikes in the second. Aaron batting with a runner in scoring position on second base with one out. The Yankee outfield plays Aaron around to the right as Bob Tilly goes into the stretch. Arms down, the pitch is swung on a hard hit ball to the second base, but he's going to throw to first base. Aaron is out, Matthews moves over to third. Henry Aaron is thrown out by Jerry Coleman on a hard hit ground ball. And here is left fielder Wes Covington. Wes flight out to Tony Kubek in short left center field in the second. is in from the mound talking with umpire Jocko Conlon in front of the plate. Two outs. The Braves with their first scoring opportunity have Matthews on third base. So it's up to Wes Covington as the Yankees lead 2-0. Bob Turley checks something with the first baseman Harry Simpson. Bob with that deep breath again has the sign. Here is the pitch to Wes, and a pass ball is outside. Ball one. On deck, it's first baseman Frank Torrey. Ball one and no strikes to count on the Braves' left fielder, Covington, who is out of the batter's box picking up a handful of dirt. Steps back in. Here's the one and no pitch. A swing and a high foul on the third base side that'll be out of play. Up into the upper deck, and it's even up at ball one and strike one. on the count on Wes Covington. Eddie Matthews on third. Bob Turley bearing down. Checks with Yogi Berra. Here's the 1-1 pitch. Outside, ball two. Two and one on Covington. Tony Kubek is shading Wes a little bit towards left center field. Hank Bauer and right is very deep, playing in the shadows now. Ball two and a strike one count. The pitch on the way, a swing and a high foul. Third base side, going over is Jerry Lumpy. He's coming in now. He makes the catch, and that retires the side. First coming in, fouls out, leaving a runner on third base. No runs and one hit, no errors. One man was left on base. And the score at the end of three and a half innings. The Yankees, two. Milwaukee nothing. Jerry Coleman leads off for the Yankees in the last half of the fourth inning. He faces right-hander Ernie Johnson. Johnson, who came on for starter Bob Buell in the last half of the third. The ground crew at Yankee Stadium has cleaned up the territory and the foul territory on the third base side, picking up all those pieces of paper. One is left in the third base coaching box, and it's picked up by Frank Crosetti. It must be a leaflet. Frank is looking at it now. Down around that hot corner. Jerry Coleman. Drew Walk in the second. Right-handed batter facing the right-hander, Ernie Johnson. Yankees two, Milwaukee nothing in the last half of the fourth. Johnson has his sign. The outfield plane to the left. The pitch swung on and fouled. Back here. Up into the grandstand. It's a strike one count on Jerry Coleman. Jerry Coleman waiting now. That poised off the right shoulder. He was going to swing, held up on a breaking pitch. It's outside a ball. Ball one and strike one. in case you're just tuning in, just joining us, scored two runs in the last half of the third on a home run by Yogi Berra. The 1-1 pitch. And strike two is called. Sidearm fastball outside, corner knee high. Ball one.
on strike two. The next hitter will be the pitcher, Bob Turley. Hank Bauer, the leadoff man, is in the on-deck circle. One and two, the count on Yankee second baseman Jerry Coleman, way outside with a sidearm pitch. Ball two and strike two. Johnson, who is a very slow, deliberate worker, into the slow rocking motion, brings up his left leg, the arm down, is swung on a high foul down that left field line, it's going to be into the crowd. Eddie Matthews and shortstop Johnny Logan racing over, but this one is about seven rows up, and it's a ball two and a strike two count on Coleman. Johnny Cooks of the Yankees pitching staff is in the hospital with a temperature and the flu. Warren Spahn's temperature has returned to normal, but he is still out of uniform. He's at the hotel here in New York City. 2-2 pitch. Swung on a fly ball down the left field line. Coming is on the run. He's still coming hard. Can he reach this one? Nope, it's in for the base hit. Jerry Coleman in the second base. Here's the throw, and he goes in standing. Jerry Coleman floats one down that left field line just out of reach of West Covington. Double is the second double in the series for Coleman. Puts a Yankee on second base with nobody out, and it brings up the pitcher, Bob Turley. Turley was thrown out by Buell in the second. A loping double down the left field line by Jerry Coleman, and a Yankee is on second base in scoring position. Nobody out. And that is it, number five for the Yankees. Infield looking for a bunt. Here is a ball. It's outside. Link Torrey was way in the grass from his first base position. Waves figuring that Turley will try to get Coleman over to third base where he can score in a long fly ball or a base hit. Here is the pitch. He's hitting away. A swing and a miss, and it's even up at one and one. Turley out of the batter's box. Now looks down at Frank Crosetti. See if Frank's going to come up with that fun sign. Eddie Matthews watching Crosetti also. Torrey is in on the infield grass. Bob Turley, a right-handed batter, and a time is called as Turley steps out of the box. Jerry Coleman on second base takes the lead. Johnson delivers. The pitch is going to be bunted. He misses the ball, and they have the runner trap for throw to third base. And they have Coleman on a run now between second and third. The throw goes into Logan, who is safe for second base. Charlie Coleman avoided the tag at second base. Boy, and he was a dead duck. Matthews ran him back too far that time, threw to Logan, who swept around to make the tag, but Coleman wasn't there. He had that foot on the, or rather the hand on the bag. He's fled to the center field side of second base. And there was a big play in the winner stray for Milwaukee. And a break for the Yankees. It's ball one and strike two on Bob Turley. Yankees lead 2 nothing. The one-two pitch. He tries the butt, fouls it off, and he's automatically out. To receiving credit for a strikeout as Turley on a one and two pitch tried to sacrifice. Foul it off. He is automatically out. So that is strikeout number two for Ernie Johnson. One man is out, and the batter right fielder Hank Bauer, who has struck out and popped out to the shortstop. Johnson, right-handed batter. Bauer looks at strike one on the inside corner knee high. Hank trying to extend his World Series hitting streak to 13 consecutive games. Outfield playing him deep and towards left field. Sidearm pitch is swung on, missed, and that's strike two. And boy, did he go around. Strike two count on Bauer. Jerry Coleman on second base with one out. Here 
as he pitched a swing and a miss. He struck him out, and that is strikeout number three. For Johnson, as far as Ernie's concerned, the side should be up now. But Coleman avoided a tag out there at second base as he had run back too far towards the bag on a pickoff play. So there are only two outs. Runner still on second base, and the batter is the center fielder, Tony Kubek. Second time, Bowers going down on strikes. And Milwaukee pitchers have chalked up seven strikeouts in the ballgame, four by Buell and three by Johnson. The Yankees lead 2-0, and Kubek takes the ball outside. Tony has struck out, and he's been thrown off with the second baseman, Felix Mantilla. Johnson's next pitch is strike one on the outside corner knee high. Whitey Ford just moved out to the Yankee bullpen to join Sturdivant, Grimm, Dittmar, and Shantz. This is the really big, big game for the Yankees. They have to win this one. Here's the 1-1 pitch. A swing of ground ball to the first base for the pitcher coming. Here's the toss to first base. He is out of that. retires the side. Torrey to Johnson. No runs and one hit. No errors and was left on base. At the end of the fourth inning, the score is the Yankees two, the Braves nothing. Frank Torrey leads off for Milwaukee and the four inning totals here at Yankee Stadium. New York two runs, five hits and no errors. The Braves no runs, two hits and no errors. Torrey has one of the two hits off Bob Turley. He singled in the right field in the second. His base hit came with two outs and nobody on base. Here is the pitch to Frank and a swing and a high foul is off to the left out of play. Strike one. One count, Torrey, Hazel, and Rice will be the first three men to face Bob Turley. Bob has had excellent control today. He has not allowed a single walk. Delivers, and a strike two is on the inside corner knee high. Which is a pretty good sign that Mr. Turley is on this afternoon. Playing Torrey a little bit towards right field. 0 2 pitch. And a fastball is a little bit too high. 4 1 and strike two. Braves first baseman, Frank Torrey. The Yankees two, Milwaukee nothing. Torrey leads off in the fifth. Torrey's 1 and 2 pitch is outside, ball two. Way outside. Ball two and strike two. Fred Haney on him at Milwaukee bullpen has Gene Conley, Don McMahon, Taylor Phillips, and Bob Trowbridge. Ball two, strike two counts. Lieutenant batter, the pitch to Torrey, and it's ball three outside. Just missed that outside corner. And that was a blazer. As the ball players would say, this guy can really hum that baseball. three and strike two. Turley ready again, fires away, a swing, a drive back in the right field, going back towards the wall is Hank Bauer, and it is a home run! Frank Torrey, who had only five home runs during the regular National League season, just crashed his second World Series home New York to Milwaukee one. That ball was well tagged to the left of the 344 mark. And here's the right fielder, Bob Hazel. Another left-handed batter. That is hit number three off Turley. And the Braves have tied the Yankees at home runs in the series at six apiece. Hazel, a left-handed batter, takes a strike on the outside corner belt high, and Bob did not like the call. Hazel fouled out to the catcher, Yogi Berra, in the second. Strike one count. Outfield playing around to the right. The pitch on the way, and a swing of ground ball hit to the second baseman. Coleman waiting, picks it up, throws over to first base. Hazel is out of there, and it's one out. Brings up catcher Del Rice, who was called out on strikes in the third. The Milwaukee Braves. Breaking into the scoring column here in the top half of the fifth inning. On a home run by first baseman Frank Torrey. Rice, a right.
right-handed batter. Turley is ready to go to work. The first pitch, curve swung on a ground ball to deep third base, picked up by Lumpy. A long throw to first, race is out, and it's two away. Two up and two down after the home run by Torrey, and here comes Ernie Johnson out of the dugout. Ernie isn't a bad hitter. Matter of fact, he had a couple of real clutch base hits during the regular Brave season in the National League, driving in some important runs to help his own cause. Got himself a home run this year, which is always a thrill to a pitcher, to anybody. There's a swing and a high foul that is back up into the upper deck. Strike one count. His home run came at the Polo Grounds here in New York City against the New York Giants. Johnson's up for the first time. With two outs and nobody on base. One run across the plate. The pitch swung on and fouled. Back against the facade and bouncing out towards home plate. Strike two. Strike two count. Second baseman Felix Mantilla is on deck. Charlie working and he's way out in front of Johnson with a strike two. Right-hander sets himself, and the pitch on the way, the curve, and it's strike three. He is called out on that strikeout number five for Bob Turley. Milwaukee has one run on one hit. There were no errors, and nobody left on base. At the end of four and a half innings, the score is New York two and Milwaukee one. We go to the last half of the fifth inning. The Yankees are leading by a score of two to one, and a gentleman who did a fine job setting up this sixth game of the 1957 World Series. From Cleveland, Ohio, Bob Neal. Thank you very much, Earl, and hello, everybody. Plenty of excitement going as it has been all during the series, and the Yankees now moving in for their turn at bat in the last half of the fifth inning. And up there now is Enos Slaughter. Enos has walked twice. He came on to score when Yogi Berra hit his home run in the third. Ernie Johnson out there on the mound, tall right-hander, delivers now to Slaughter, and he looks at a fastball, strike one. The outfield for Milwaukee. Covington, Aaron, and Hazel all playing straight away. Here's the one-strike delivery. Checks, and it's low and inside. One ball, one strike. Eddie Matthews in close at third with a left-hand batter up. It's a high compliment to the kind of great pitching we've had today. Milwaukee outfield. Practically uh, could have stayed home. There's a fastball in the inside corner. One ball, two strikes. Outside of fielding a few base hits. They have not had a chance. Here's the one-two pitch coming down to Slaughter. Swings, hits a bounce to the right side. The first baseman, Torrey, has got it. Waves off the pitcher, steps on first, one out. So Ina Slaughter bounces out to Frank Torrey. And there's one away. And Yogi Berra, who has two hits and two times at bat today, his home run put the Yankees ahead 2-0. Braves coming back with a home run by Torrey to make it a two-to-one ball game. Yogi had to wait till the sixth game to get his first RBI, and he picked up two of them. The outfield pulls the right for him. Right side of the infield backed up. Johnson ready. Delivers to him. A fastball. A swing and a miss. First strike. Whenever you get hard-throwing right-hand pitchers throwing against left-handers, you're going to see some home runs. There's a swing and a foul coming back in the stands, and it's two strikes. Especially if those right-handers have a little trouble keeping that ball where they want it. Bob Buell gave Barra a fastball, or it might have been a slider, but he pitched him inside. And Yogi planted it out there in Yogi land, out in that short right field area. Johnson looking in for the sign and the windup. And a double windup, and the two-strike pitch comes down to Barra. Swing and a line shot down the first baseline. Down to one knee as Torrey waves off Johnson, steps on first, Barra's out number two. half of the fifth inning, and Gil McDougal is up there, has a single in two times at bat. Gil struck out in the first inning, singled in the third. Folks flying some kites around here. One of them is uh, just over the infield now. There's a curveball low and outside for ball one. straight away. Left side of the infield backed up. New York, two runs on five hits, no errors. Milwaukee, one run, three hits, no errors. Johnson ready. Draws a beat on the plate as he fires the one-ball pitch outside. Ball two. Two and nothing. Game 
game number six in the Yankees with their back smack dab against the wall. The Braves lead three games to two. They need one to wrap it up. The Yankees fighting to hang on, to keep it moving. Johnson ready now with a two-ball delivery. Makes it to McDougal. Swings, misses. Strike one. Two balls, one strike. And Gill, when he came up to the Yankees, had a unusual batting stance where he held a bat cocked back in a way, sort of like a whip. He's modified it a little. 2-1 delivery. Here's a curve for strike. 2-2. Two and two. So Ernie Johnson, who is tall of stature and who's got the strong right arm and the great heart that goes with the fine pitchers out there with a 2-2 count and two out. Nobody on for the Yankees. New York leading 2-1. He's ready to work. And the 2-2 pitch comes down. There's a swing and a miss. Strike three. So that is the strikeout recorded by Johnson and in the fifth inning no runs no hits no errors and nobody left on for New York at the end of five it is Yankees two and Milwaukee one top of the sixth inning now for the Milwaukee Braves Felix the Cat Mantia who is playing second base in place of the injured Red Cheney right hand batter Mantia has flied to center has flied to right field Bob Turley has given up to Milwaukee only three hits. A home run, a double, and a single. He has not walked a batter, and he has struck out five. He comes down with a fastball. It's inside, sailing, ball one. Turley has a great many of the mannerisms that Bob Feller used to have. He resembles him physically a little uh, taller than Bob. Here's the one ball pitch. Swung on, a bounce to the left side. Moving in is Gil McDougal, and he makes the throw, and he's got him. Very close. Mantia can really go down that line, and he can really put on those brakes. So there's one out as Gil McDougal feels that ball and throws over to Simpson. Bob Turley working in the sixth inning, protecting the narrowest of margins. Yankees two, Milwaukee one. Up now is Johnny Logan. Logan has only been on one time against Turley's pitching in the entire series. That was a base on balls. Here's the pitch to Turley by Turley. A little looper that Jerry Coleman moves in and grabs for the out. little pop-up looper hit off the handle of his bat, and he pops it to Coleman at second. Two out. Very quickly, Turley gets two men of the Braves in the sixth inning. And a fact now here in Yankee Stadium, which is true anywhere, but perhaps more so here because the sun sinking over the edge of this high building casts a shadow over the mound. And Turley's right arm now, when it comes down to that plate, when it gets to about his shoulder, it goes into the shadows, and it makes it more difficult for a batter to pick it up. Eddie Matthews is in there, has a double and two times at bat. Left-hand batter, and the delivery to him is a curveball too low. Ball one. Eddie is using a Joe Adcock model, and the folks who make bats are trying to convince him he ought to use a very small barrel bat. Outside for ball two. Two balls, no strikes. Matthews standing out there. Turley, who has not walked a batter, giving signs that he might walk one here. Outfield's pulled around to the right. Big hole open in left center field. McGill McDougal is shaded back of second almost. He's about five steps on the third base side of second. Coleman deep at second base. There's a swing and a miss on a slider that just cut the outside corner. So Matthews stands out there. Two balls, one strike, two out. Yankees leading 2-1. to one. We're in the top of the sixth inning. Yankee Stadium. Early blowing on his pitching hand, looking into Yogi Barra, gets the sign. Breeze is blowing almost in now from left field. There's a fastball inside. And it's three balls, one strike. And the fans begin to buzz. Yankees lead 2-1. Eddie Matthews up there with two out. The Yankees got their two runs with two out in the third inning. When Buell walked Slaughter and Barra blasted one. Turley looks for the sign. 3-1 pitch. Matthews checks his swing, gets a fastball over the inside corner at the belt. Strike two. Three balls, two strikes. So Bob Turley, who used to be the wild man of the American League, who went to the modified no-wind-up bit and who has done very well, is ready with the payoff pitch to Matthews. Coming down, swings a ground ball, slow roll to the right side. Coleman up with it, shoots it over to Simpson, he's out. The sixth inning. The Braves get out of one, two, three order. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on. At the end of five and a half, 
Score is New York 2, Milwaukee 1. Last half of the sixth inning, sixth game of the World Series. And Jerry Lumpy, the left-hand batting third baseman for New York, who has single and who's walked, is out there to try his luck against Ernie Johnson. Johnson came on in the third, has worked two and a third innings, and has struck out four. Bob Buell, who started, struck out four. Swings and hits a bouncer down the first baseline foul. Frank Torrey was over to field it, but the umpire first base, Bill McKinley, watching that line very carefully, motioned instantly foul. Nestor Shylock of the American League is out along the right field line. His specific job is to watch for balls that are hit into the stands that are close to being foul. Down the left field line is Frank Sikori of the National League, who has the same duty. All right, here's the one-strike pitch coming down by Johnson. A fastball too low. One ball, one strike. Field is straight away for the Braves. Matthews in close to the left-hand batter. Mantia, the second baseman, and Torrey, the first baseman, backed up. The wind-up, 1-1 pitch, is too low for ball two. Two balls and a strike. Breaking ball delivered by Johnson. So Randy Johnson, wearing number 32, has come on to try and help out the Milwaukee Braves and their hopes and ambitions to take this banner back to Milwaukee tonight trying to hold these Yankees. Here's the pitch. A swing and a bouncer off his pitching hand. Coming in fast is Logan. Throws to first and he's out on a beautiful play. And that will have to be scored. 1-6-3. Johnson threw up his pitching hand, slowed the ball down a little, deflected it perfectly to Logan, who then fired across in a fine stretch by Torrey. And the play goes from the pitcher Johnson to the shortstop Logan to the first baseman Torrey. 1-6-3 if you happen to score along. Simpson's up there. Simpson has, perhaps in the minds of manager, manager Casey Stengel, not been the big man with the bat that he had hoped he would be. Swings on this one, fouls it off. Now he struck out twice in the second and third innings. day before yesterday, last game at the Milwaukee, game number five, he struck out, bounced into a double play, and bounced the shortstop. Johnson with the one-strike pitch is ready, and he delivers to him. Pass ball outside. One ball, one strike. So, Harry Simpson, who went from Kansas City to the Yankees late in the season, standing in there, steps out as he figured that Johnson was about to pitch to him before he was ready. Is set to go. The 1 1 delivery to Simpson. A fastball outside, two balls and a strike. Breeze blowing from left center field in towards right field. Shadow has now reached out beyond the mound. 2 1 pitch to Simpson. Takes a strike. Fastball right down the middle. Two balls, two strikes. like he might be guessing a little. And now Johnson will try to fool him. All right, here's the windup and the 2-2 pitch comes down. Swung on, a line drive, hit out in the left center field deep. Hank Aaron moves over to his right, he's under it, takes it. So Simpson gets a hold of a fly ball, hits it to the outfield, and that's the first catch made by a Milwaukee outfielder so far in this ball game today. Ernest Thorwald Johnson, if you will, who comes from Brattleboro, Vermont. A 6'4", 205 pounds. Likes to fish, likes to golf. He's been with Milwaukee for a long time. Moved with them when they moved from Boston. Pitched to Jerry Coleman outside, ball one. Started in 1942 with Hartford. Spent three years in the military. And he's trying to usher all of the military strength he can right now. Comes down, here's a bouncer right back to him. He's got it, he lets Coleman run, he tosses it to first, he's out. In the sixth inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. At the end of six, it's New York 2, Milwaukee 1. We'll... We have a change now in the Yankee lineup. Joe Collins has come in to play first base. So if you're scoring along with us, Joe Collins. Go bad in Harry Simpson's spot, number seven, and he's now playing first base. It is the top of the seventh inning. Hank Aaron, who has struck out, bounced out second and first, is in their right-hand batter. And the 
outfield shade around to the opposite side. Takes a fastball high and inside, ball one. The outfield moved around with Kubek in right center. They're giving Aaron all of left center field. Slaughter's deep in left. Bob Turley defending a two to one lead. Looks into Yogi Berra. Pitches now with a fastball outside, ball two. Two ball count. Aaron takes a look down to Connie Ryan, coaching at third, to see whether he swings away or whether he takes. And Yogi Berra would like to know what that sign means, because he's going to be calling this next pitch. Aaron, prior to today, had eight hits and 19 times at bat. Top batter for the Braves. Takes a fastball for strike. So the take was on. Aaron, number 44. Takes a little flash down to Ryan. Two balls, one strike. Turley looking in. Delivers. A fastball inside. Ball three. Bobby Shands, the left-hander, is working in the Yankee bullpen. Turley with a 3-1 count. Comes down and delivers a fastball. Hit deep in the left field. In a slaughter going back. That ball is coming. Hazel waiting 
the, t- the pitch is high and inside, and it's two balls and one strike. As it gets the outside corner, two and one. A lot of stuff on that ball as Turley came down there through with it, and it really hummed. Sitting where we are, back at the plate, you can see the ball breaking. The ball really took off. Two-one pitch. Fast ball just inside. Ball three. Three, three balls, one strike now with two outs. Kubek in right center. Ian Slaughter is over in left center. The pitch swings and misses. Thank you. Before the game today, the fans were entertained by the 47th Infantry Band with Patrick J. Austin conducting. And then just prior to the game, the 69th Regiment Band. Three balls and two strikes. And two out, and the pitch comes down. A swing and a drive deep into the center field. Going back is Kubek. Stops, looks up into the sky, moves back. He's got it. So in the seventh inning, for the Milwaukee Braves, one run on Henry Aaron's home run. One hit, no errors, nobody left. At the end of six and a half innings, side arm fastball over the outside corner, strike two. The attendance for this, the sixth game of the World Series, 61,408. Total attendance, 333,000. There's a punt attempt, and he, he fouls it off. And uh, Turley thought he still had one coming. He moved back into the right-hand batter's box, but he punched foul on the third strike, and that's all. So for the second time, Bob Turley is charged as a strikeout for punting on a third strike, running foul. Curly apparently thought the count was one and one. That Johnson had poured the first two pitches right over. Bob Curley walks over to the Yankee uh, dugout. Five strikeouts by Johnson. Hank Bauer, the batter. They pitch to Hank. It's going on a ground ball foul. Hit down by the left field line. It's curved foul over by the stands. Retrieved by Covington. It goes into Frankie Corsetti. Brave pitchers this afternoon have recorded nine strikeouts. Four for Bob Buell, five for Johnson. Pitch now to Bauer, a curveball outside. One ball, one strike. Hank Bauer has struck out twice today, popped to the shortstop. Struck out once in Sunday's game. Pitch, he swings and misses. No, he says he didn't swing. Two balls and one strike. Hank pulled up his swing just in time. Umpire Jock O'Connor looking down, says he did not swing. Two balls, one strike. Bauer with a strong wrist can hold that bat up. Used to be a steam fitter in the offseason. Outfield around the left. Here's Johnson's delivery in the 2-1. A swing and a slight foul going off the facing and dropping downstairs. Two balls, two strikes. We're all tied up here at Yankee Stadium. New York 2, Milwaukee 2. Five hits for the Yankees, four for the Braves. Two of the four hits for Milwaukee home runs. Pitch to bar. Sidearm. Drive deep to the left field. That ball is going into the stand for a home run. Hit the foul pole out there. Bounce back on the playing field. So it's a home run. Hit that white facing on the fair side of the foul pole in left field. Hank Bauer hit a line drive that was never more than about 40 feet off the ground that hit the screen on the fair side of the foul pole and it bounced back out on the playing field but under the ground rules if it hits that screen which is there as an aid to the umpires it is a home run so the Yankees break out ahead 3-2 and there's a bunt attempt by the center fielder two back fouled off so Bowers line drive the foul pole off the screening out there in left field for a home run. Here's the one strike pitch by Johnson. Comes down, swung on, sliced foul, coming back in the stands out of play. Johnson has given up only two hits. First run off of him, and he had retired. Ten men in a row when Bauer stroked his home run. Is popped up to the right side, moving back out in the short right field is Mantilla, the second baseman, drifting back, still moving back. He's under protection. So Kubek pops to Mantilla. And in the seventh inning, 
The Yankees now have Enos Water coming up. Nobody on. Two out. And Hank Bauer keeps his record intact of hitting in 13 straight series games. There's a swing and a miss by Country on a sharp breaking slider. back in 1906 that hit in 12 straight games the report is that from the observers out along the left field line that that ball hit that screen on the foul pole about 12 or 15 feet up but it went out there as a line drive here's the two strike pitch to slaughter outside and low for ball one one ball two strikes for the fastball breeze freshening up a little blowing out towards the right field line Yankees three, Milwaukee two. Yankees with six hits, the Braves with four. This has been a battle of home runs. There's a swing on a curve, and he fouls it back. All of the runs that have been scored this afternoon have come as a result of home runs. The two for the Braves, home runs by Torrey and Aaron. The three runs by the Yankees, two of them coming on Yogi Barra's home run in the third. And the lead run by Hank Barra's home run here in the seventh. Here's the one-two pitch. Curve is inside. Two balls, two strikes. Field playing straight away. Ernie Johnson looking in to his catcher, Del Rice. 2 2 delivery. Swung on, a bounce to the right side, grabbed by Torrey, waves off the pitcher, steps on first, and that's all for slow. Top of the eighth inning now for the Milwaukee Braves. Del Rice, the catcher's up there. He's been called out on strikes. He bounced out third to first. The outfield is straight away for him as Bob Curley is up there and throwing, and the pitch comes down. A fastball, a swing and a miss, strike one. given up four hits, two home runs, a double and a single. He has struck out five, and he has not walked about it. He looks into Yogi Berra. Here's the wind-up pitch on the way to right. The fastball is just outside and low. One ball, one strike. Shirley is really pumping that ball. It's dancing, and it's coming in there. He's ready. Fires on the 1-1. Swing and a miss. Strike two. Popped out of Yogi Berra's mitt. Breeze blowing across from left to right. Temperature is in the low 70s. Long shadows now have reached across the infield, have gone beyond the mound, so that the batter and the pitcher are both in the shadows. 1-2 pitch. A swing and a miss. Strike three. Del Rice goes down swinging in the eighth inning. Strikeout number six for Bob Turley. Johnson, the pitcher is due up there, but we're going to have a pinch hitter, and it looks like Carl Sawatsky. Carl Sawatsky moves in there as a pinch hitter for the pitcher Ernie Johnson. a left-hand batter is from Little Rock, Arkansas weighs 219 pounds 5'11", swings over a fastball misses strike one Carl is very solidly built he's 30 years old or will be this November outside, one ball, one strike batting for the pitcher Ernie Johnson. Next pitch, a foul back. Joe Rice, the catcher, was the first man up here in the eighth inning, and he struck out. Carl Sawatsky is up there now batting for the pitcher Ernie Johnson. In the eighth inning, Yankees leading 3-2. Bob Turley, working out there on the mound, is ready now. The one-two pitch on the way. A curveball, strike three ball. Seven strikeouts for the flamethrower, who is working his curveball very effectively. And in there now is 
Felix Mentia, second baseman. He had hit a fly ball to center field, flying out to right, bounced out short to first. Close stance, stands deep in the right-hand batter's box. Outfield straight away. In close at third is Jerry Lumpy. Pitch is swung on. Back one. Pass ball over the outside corner. Mantilla swinging, didn't get it. Bob Turley working quickly. Delivers now. Gets the pass ball just outside. One and one. Third baseman for New York. Jerry Lumpy in close at third has had only one chance. That was a bouncer by Rice in the fifth inning. Shortstop Gil McDougal has had only one chance. Grounded by Mantee in the sixth. Here's the wind-up 1-1 pitch. There's a fastball just inside. Two balls and a strike. The Braves bullpen has Taylor Phillips, Gene Conley working quickly. Whitey Ford, Don Larson, and Dittmar are all working. Larson, if the Yankees win today, will undoubtedly go tomorrow. Outfield straight away. Two out. Top of the eighth. The 2-1 pitch comes down. A swing and a foul off the chest protector of umpire Jocko Conlon. So it's 2-2 two and two now as Bob Turley wearing number 19. Who last year worked a 10-inning affair, which he lost 1-0 in the sixth game. in now again takes that big sigh two out two balls two strikes the 2-2 pitch is just outside ball three with a fastball three balls and two strikes umpire Jack O'Connor leaning over the catcher Yogi Barra taking a very good sighting at that ball hasn't even been an eyebrow lifted by these players on the decisions by these umpires indicates the great capability payoff pitch two high ball four Turley walks his first batter. And Felix Mantilla in the eighth inning draws a walk. He is a dangerous base runner, has great speed. And here's Johnny Logan. Struck out in the first inning, fouled to the catch in the fourth, popped to the second baseman in the sixth. Jerry Coleman comes in to have a talk with Turley. And the excitement here in Yankee Stadium is building every moment. And some 61,000 of them jammed in here watching now as the Yankees try to protect that 3-2 lead. Curly ready, stretches, looks to first, and he's ready now with the pitch. Comes down to Logan. Fastball outside, ball one. Curly has had the stretch only two times today. Once in the second inning when Torrey got on with the single with two out. Curly got Hazel. And with Matthews on second in the fourth inning, he did to get Aaron. Then he went to the full windup against Covington. Looks to first. Mantilla leads away. Throw to first. First throw that Turley has made to first base today. Joe Collins, who came on in the seventh inning to replace Harry Simpson. Turley's got a good move over there as right-handers go. Ready, looks to first in the one-ball pitch. Fastball inside, ball two. Bill White, uh, now with the Baltimore Orioles, just uh, still has great motion over there to first. Herb score of the Indians, Billy Pierce, and Whitey Ford. And if you want to see some, watch that Ford and Chan. Nothing now as Turley in a little jam looks to first and delivers. Logan swings and pops it up into short left field. Going out there is Gil McDougal shading his eyes. The sun is bright. Back it up. He's got it. Eighth inning for the Braves. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one man left on. At the end of seven and a half innings of play, the score is New York three, Milwaukee two. Last half of the eighth inning for the New York Yankees, and we're going to have a new pitcher for the Milwaukee Braves. Don McMahon. Don McMahon, who, like his two predecessors, Buell and Johnson, can really fire that ball, is coming on here in the eighth inning. The man has worked 
He's been in two games as a reliever, worked four innings, given up only two hits. He's walked three men and struck out five. And, of course, his earned run average is a 0.00. So the Yankees leading 3-2 come up for their wraps here in the last half of the eighth, hopeful of increasing their lead. And then faced with the necessity of keeping the Braves at bay in the top of the ninth. The man came on in the seventh inning of the first game. And he's out there, and the first man he's going to face will be Yogi Berra. First pitch, strike. Johnson worked four in the third inning. Gave up only two hits. Did not walk about it. Barra swings and he fouls it off. Two strikes. Foul tipped it into the catcher's mitt, as a matter of fact. All right. Two strikes now to Yogi. Two strike pitch is outside with a fastball, one and two. Barra has two hits and three times at bat. His two run home run in the third inning gave the Yankees a two nothing lead. His single in the first inning went for naught as he died at second. There's a swing and a fly ball hit into short left field near the stands. It's dropping. Out of play. Yogi, who perhaps is best remembered for many things in World Series competition, has been on the end of a couple of great catches, one by Sandy Amaros, when Yogi hit one down the left field line. Yogi knows that right-hand pitchers are going to pitch him outside, and he tries to hit down that left field line. Wind up one two pitch. He swings and fouls it off. Outfield for Milwaukee is giving Barra all of left center field. They have Hank Aaron pulled over in right center. Mantia back on the edge of the outfield grass at second. And Frank Torrey, the first baseman, back on the edge of the grass at first. Three and two, Yankees lead. Pitch to Barra. Swings and fouls it back. Now to Yogi. John McMahon working out there, looking in. Starts the wind up. Pitch to Barra. Swung on, sliced foul. So Yogi's having himself a ball here as he distributes a few souvenirs. Number eight, Yogi Barra. Pumping that bat. McMahon looking in for the sign. Reads it. Starts the wind up. One-two delivery. Swung on. Grounder hit down that third baseline. Barra did not come in. Outside, ball two. 
Eddie Matthews backs up a little to make sure that Barra does not get a break away from third in the event that Lumpy tries to squeeze him in. Matthews playing one step away from third. Now moves in. Here's the pitch coming, and it's inside for ball three. Joe so McMahon concentrating on keeping his eye on Barra has lost his sight on the plate now as he works the count to three and nothing. Frankie Cosetti, the big man, calling the signs. Three nothing pitch. He swings and misses as McMahon pours that fastball through there. It's great pitching by this right-hander from Milwaukee. Taylor Phillips working in the bullpen for the Braves. Johnny Logan motioning to West coming in to move in. Three to two, Yankees lead. Three balls, one strike to count. We're in the last of the eighth. The pitch swung on. Fly ball hitting the left field. And coming over for it near the line is Covington. Reaches by the stands. He grabs it. And here comes Barra. The throw is coming in. It's going to be close. High throw. Slides it up. So in the eighth inning, the Milwaukee Braves with the fine defensive play by Covington, who makes a perfect throw to the plate. Behind the Yankees, Yogi Berra sliding, and the throw high, but the tag made by Del Rice. And in the eighth inning, no runs for the Yankees. One hit, no errors, and nobody left on base. And at the end of eight innings, the score, New York Yankees three, the Milwaukee Braves two. Yogi Berra has been haunted through most of this series by Wes Covington. And, of course, Gil McDougall also remembers Mr. Covington's spectacular grab of his bid for a home run in Milwaukee. But in the eighth inning, with the Yankees having a runner at third and only one man out, and Lumpy hitting a fly ball near the break of the stands in left field, Covington not only caught the ball, but made a perfect throw into the plate to get Barra. So we move to the top of the ninth inning. Yankees lead 3-2, and up there is Eddie Matthews. Pitch to him. Pass ball. Outside ball one. Braves have Matthews, a left-hand batter. Aaron, a right-hand batter, and Covington, a left-hand batter. All three men are capable of hitting the long ball. A pitch to Matthews, a fastball to high ball two. Aaron has hit one of the two home runs hit by the Braves. Coleman and Barra now get together as they have a visit with Bob Turley to remind him that they are within three outs of a victory. And I presume that the thoughts of Bob Turley out there are a reflection back to the thoughts of Warren Spahn, who had himself within the grasp of an easy victory and then found in the ninth inning that things could suddenly change so quickly. Bob Turley, with a two-ball count, has walked only one batter. He looks in now. The outfield pulled around to the right and deep, and the pitch comes down to Matthews. Outside, ball three. of bullpen activity for New York and for Milwaukee. Collins drifts back at first, playing deep. Coleman deep at second. Matthews looks down. 3 nothing pitch is inside ball four. So Matthews opens the ninth for Milwaukee with a base on ball. That is the second walk given up by Turley. Yogi Barra goes out towards the mound to have a chat. And Hank Aaron, who has uh, spoken rather eloquently with a home run in three times at bat, now has a visit with third base coach Connie Ryan halfway. They're standing just to the left of the Congo circle. And Aaron has got his instructions, and it may be that they're asking him to go up there and bunt. Or with Matthews, who can run, they may be going with a hit and run. Or they may be having uh, Hank Aaron up there to try and throw one out of the park. We shall all know in a moment. The outfield is moved around to the right. Matthews leads away. The check by Turley, and the pitch comes down. He swings on a fastball, and he fouls it back right down in front of us. So Aaron again now checks with third base coach Connie Ryan to see whether the same thing is on. Matthews being held close at first by Joe Collins. Lumpy is guarding that foul line at third. Turley looking into Yogi Berra. Gets the sign. One strike pitch. The check of the runner and the pitch is on the way. A curveball. Strike two over the outside corner. So Bob Turley working very cautiously now with the narrowest of margins. Three to two. The Yankees leading. The Yankees have seven hits. The Braves have four. Aaron decides he'd like a little rosin. Now the burden is 
is on Hank Aaron. He's got to protect that plate with a two-strike count. Matthews jumps off to a lead. Collins holds against the runner. Turley looks over there, delivers a fastball strike three. The Yankees leading 3-2. They're backs to the walls here in Yankee Stadium. Wes Covington, left-hand batter, is up there. Gurley looks to first, delivers a fastball, strike one call. The Yankee rooters are tense. They're excited and they're nervous. Brave fans are ever hopeful. And the outfield for New York is full to the right. Look to first as Matthews edges away, and the pitch comes down to Covington. A curve for strike two. So Bob Charlie, who can make that fastball look like the top of a ping-pong ball as he pumps it through there, has now gone to his curve. And he has set West Covington up with two curve balls and a two-strike count. Covington stands deep, bends over to waist. Matthews, the base runner at first. We're in the top of the ninth inning. Yankees three, Braves two. Turley looks to first, delivers a fastball, a bouncer right back to Turley. Throws to McDougal for one, a throw to first. Double play in the game's over. One, six, three. Bob Turley being congratulated as the New York Yankees, who are faced with win or out, have come up with a victory. And in the ninth inning for Milwaukee, no runs. No hits, no errors, and nobody left on. The final score reads New York Yankees. Three runs on seven hits, no errors. Milwaukee, two runs on four hits and no errors.